All right, now the good thing about having a big tunnel boot is having all that storage space. But unfortunately for us, we've only got one light. Now, having the light at one end of the tunnel boot only has one advantage. It only lights up one end of the tunnel. How about we light the entire tunnel and while we're at it, put a sensor light on. Now, the next thing you need to do is find yourself a power source, which shouldn't be too hard as the light comes with one. Then what you need to do is take off the front cover with a thin flathead screwdriver so you can access the internals of the light. Then unscrew everything so you can get into it. And there you have it guys, the internal wires. Hot tip, when you go to rewire this, remember to turn off the load, as these will still be live. Well, the red will be live, black will be earth. Now, the way you wire it will all depend on if you want to have an external switch or if you want to utilize the switch that it comes with. I'm gonna utilize the switch that it comes with so that I can save costs and I'm only going to use these two wires, red and black. Righto guys, now if you want to install just one sensor, it's pretty straightforward. You've got your power in and you've got your power out. Now, if you want to install two sensors, one at this end and one at the other end, well, you need to run a cable or a power source down to the other sensor. so that it can also operate. Now you guys are probably wondering, why the hell would anyone want to put Adventure King's light strip on a 100 plus K van? Well, I used it on our previous camper trailer on the outside with a sensor light and it worked a bloody treat. Even in the wet, harsh conditions, never let me down. Touch wood. So I thought I'd use it again and it comes in four meters, so the tunnel boot is shorter than four meters, so you really got to measure it out how you want it all around the edges. But that's up to you. Now, lucky for me, I'm not that big in weight and size. But what is going on, guys? Well, you're probably wondering, why is it dark? Well, if you've got kids like us, well, they bloody take up a lot of time, let me tell you, but they're so worth it. Anyway, so that's why it's dark. Had to go do stuff, had to sort out the kids, they're in bed now. But anyway, so let's uh, crack on with it. Now what you need to do, because the tunnel boot isn't four meters long, you need to measure out where you want to put the LED strip. Now I've laid it around the edges, as you can see, Just to measure it out, it goes all the way around the back there on the other side. And, um, but before you glue it down or before you silicon it down, you wanna make sure the strip light works first. So here's a 12 volt source I prepared earlier. Let's plug it in. Oh, that is bright. Ah, oh, you're gonna see everything in here. Let's have a look properly. That is going to look a treat. Now, let's also test out the uh, motion sensor, which is here. So, good thing about that, that also plugs in just like that. Plug it in. Now, all right, so the motion sensor's there. Let's get out of the way and wait for the light to go off. So la di da di da not doing anything. Let's go for a nice casual stroll in the dark. Oh, hmm, what to do? Now, hopefully the light goes off soon. Oh, there we go. Now let's walk back casually. Oh, see, there we go. 
and that light turns on. Now I'm going to do another install for the outside as well. Because these are waterproof, I've had them on my last camper trailer and it worked a bloody treat. Especially when you're out late at night or if you go to the, well, our other camper didn't have a toilet, but if you're, you know, go to the toilet and you want to come back or you, you know, take long walks on the beach in the moonlight and come back, well, it lights up and then you don't trip over stuff or it deters um, little buggers trying to steal your stuff. Anyway, okay, so that all works. Let's get on with it. Righto, guys and gals. Now you're probably wondering, how do I change the timer settings on the sensor? Well, it's pretty easy. First of all, you gotta take off the back cover just like that. Then you gotta get a small Phillips head screwdriver, just like this. Then all you need to do is adjust this like that to the desired setting that you prefer. So you might wanna play around and see which time is best for you. Then once you've figured that out, put the cover back on like this, click it in and then install as such. Cool. All right, guys, time to silicone it up. All right, brand new one, so let's get it all out, squeeze it through, put a little bead, well, a long bead, actually. Ah, uh, stop. Oh, all right, so the difficult thing about this is it twists and turns. I'm going to try my best. Do one big long bead. You don't need too much, just a, a thin bead along there. All right, let's be careful and not get this on your shirt or any of your clothing really that you don't want ruined all right may need to get into a shirt that i don't want ruined all right shirt change now i think another plan of attack instead of putting the silicon on the led strip i'm going to put the bead up where i'm going to put the strip I found that trying to put the strip up, um, well, it kind of just twists and then silicon gets everywhere. So I'm gonna wipe it down and start over again. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yep, okay. Come on. Uh, end. Take two, let's. Clean it up. Well, see, I make the mistake, so you don't have to. All right. We live and we learn. So if I do this at night, and then during the day, I can uh, see and do the rest of the wiring. That's not difficult at all. <clears throat> Look, this is going to be the tough part. Trying to stick it to the roof. All right, I'll do that last bit when I get back, when I'm at the end. 
All right. See you on the other side. Let's get on. We're sticking it up. Now it should suction up a bit. And stay up there with the silicon. I'll stick a bit of tape up for the first one to keep it up. So that plug is a little heavier. Oh, do the limbo. Oh, nah. Come on. All right. So comfy. Whew. Yep. Working a treat. Shoes off. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's an easier way, but this is the way I'm doing it. Oh, hot tip get stuff out of your pocket so when you roll on it, it doesn't stick into your leg. All right. I know it looks a little bit messy at the moment, but I will tidy it up. I think my back bends that far. Oh, man. Well, that was fun. All right, time to tidy up. There's, there's nothing worse than shoddy workmanship, or shoddy looking workmanship. I want it looking specky. Now, if you find any, or if you know of any easy ways to do this, drop them down in the comments. Would love to know. I mean, I'm not gonna be doing the tunnel boot again, touch wood, but if I do, and there's an easier way, I'll do it. Just do the seal wiggle. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Give me strength. All right, guys, let's check out the tunnel boot. Let us know in the comments, yeah, nah, or nah, yeah, if you think it's any good. All right, now before cutting into any wires, you need to turn the load off so you don't get the old zappy zappy because that will feel crappy crappy. Now you will need to cut the switch wire that leads into the light. Oh, hey! Righto guys, now I've mentioned in a previous video that you can save money at the till if you get the Bunnings app. Now, if you want to save even more money you actually need to plan ahead. Now, what I've done is I've ordered some stainless steel lock nuts from eBay. All right, cheers, thanks a lot. Thank Have a good one. Woo. Now, if you wanna get these from Bunnings, sure. 
that's okay. It's $3 for 10, but for $36, you can get 170 pack and you get a whole range of lock nuts. Now, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is crimp on a terminal. There you go. Hey there, now, if you're like me and you like to reuse, recycle and save money at the same time, well, you've probably got a bunch of these lying around from previous purchases that you definitely use. So you're probably wondering, how am I gonna tell which is the positive and which is the negative? Well, the first thing you'll need to do is use a multimeter. That will be able to tell you which is positive, and which is negative. Let's go and have a look. All right guys, now before you plug the socket into a power source, you need to separate these two wires because you don't want to get the zappy zappy because that'll make you feel crappy crappy. Anyway, now let's plug it in and test it out. Let's get the multimeter. One, two, there you go. So this side with the red is positive and obviously the other side is negative. Now, if you had tried it the other way first, one, two, see the multimeter has a negative on it? That means it's opposite. So opposite of this is obviously red. So that's gonna be the positive. All right, now we know we can kind of look at it and find out what, if there's any markings on it and remember it, or you can mark it yourself. Now it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You don't do this on a metal surface because you're gonna get the zappy zappy. All right, time to get crimp. Find the right crimping size on the crimper. Now, to connect power to the sensor, you need one of these male DC 12 volt adapters, which you can easily wire in and screw up and tighten. And they're easily marked out positive and negative. Once you've marked out where you want to put the hole so that the wires fit through, time to drill a hole. All right, time to sand it or file it down so you don't have any rough edges. All right, now that some of the split tubing is protecting some of the wires, we can now put the cable tie mounts on. All right, let's get started. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, back it up here. Now, I know I said this black wire is to remain connected and then run a separate red wire to the sensor. Well, when I did that, the strip light would switch off, but this light would stay on. So now I've run its own separate circuit and spliced it in. And it definitely works now. So let's hook it all up and get it all ready. Now the tricky bit is trying to line these bloody holes up. All right, I think I've got one. Oh, all right, time to put the cable tie mounts on. It's gonna be hell boring. Like I've got this. There you go, that's one. All right, probably should fast forward this video because it's gonna be hella boring. Now, I don't know if you guys have this issue, but I used to have trouble trying to feed the split tubing on. You keep going and then it'd get a little bit difficult. But what I've found is you get your Phillips head screwdriver. I'm sure you could get another screwdriver. Pop it in the groove and then slide it on through. There you go. And it's sliding down the cable.
the other side of the tunnel boot at the other end of the light strip, we have a male connector. Now for the sensor, it comes with a male connector for the output. So what we need to do is wire in a female connector. All right, let's do it. There we go. Now we can hook that up to the light strip. But first, let's tidy it up a bit. Put some insulation tape on it. What have we got here? Hey, get out of my tunnel boot. Oh, hey, time for the fun part. Let's put the rest of the cable tie mounts on and also let's get squeezy. All right. All right, let's go to the other side. All right, time to get in. Uh, it looked easier before. Oh, lost the mic. Ah, this is the fun part. All right, let's start now. Where are we gonna put this? Now, have you seen that movie? Cable tie. Anyway, it's time for the second most funnest part of the night. Cable tying. get out gracefully. Ooh, Ooh the doodle. <laughs> All right. Where's my thongs? One nap later. The very next evening. Oh, hey, get out, guys. Welcome back. Now, it's late at night yet again, and I'm here out doing some real world testing on the tunnel boot sensor light so that you guys don't have to. Now, at the moment, I'm about five meters away from the tunnel boot, and it's on, so I'm about to get cracking. Now, I've got to whisper because the old wife is asleep. Well, actually, the whole neighborhood's asleep, so. I've got to be quiet, mainly for my wife. Anyway, let's get on. All right, five meters away. Crack it, do, 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 be, do. All right, let's go four meters. I'm a crack it, do, do, be, do, do, be, do, da, do. Oh, hey, so the sensor light seems to crack on when you're about four meters away. All right, let's get closer, see how bright it is. That is bloody bright. And being LED, 
draws bugger all. You have a look there. You got the sensor up there. Yep, that's a junction box. You're probably wondering how it ended up in this situation. Well, like the missus, I like things tidy. And this is no exception. And you've got the old light and the switch there. So when you first initially turn it on, it'll switch on and then switch off. And then the sensor will be live. Let's try it out. Off, switch on. And now it's on, now it's live. Move around, oh, sensor picks you up, switches back on. How bloody amazing is that? Oh, gotta go inside. Bloody mozzies are coming. All right, guys, let's test out the other sensor light on the other side of the tunnel boot, on the driver's side. All right, let's switch it on. All right, now it's gonna switch off. Now the sensor is loaded. All right, now I'm walking around. Hey, how you doing? Let's do be do ba ba do ba boo. Uh, hey. Wow, that was bright. Check it out. Ah, so bloody good. All right, job well done. Time for bed. All right. Do -do 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 -do. Time to take the escalator down. Ah, just kidding. Now, if you leave the sensor on, it's eventually gonna go off. But when you open the tunnel boot, it should switch on. You have a look. <gasps> Boom. Hey presto, super bloody bright. And you'll be able to see everything that you shove in there. You're like, ah. Oh. Where did I leave the blah, blah, blahs? Oh, they're right down there. Yep, and that'll happen on the other side as well because the light goes all the way across, not just at one end. All right, I am getting savaged by bloody mozzies, so it's, I think it's time for bed. It's past midnight, well, it's way past midnight now, so time to crack on for a sleepy bias. All right, till next time, bye. All right, switch this off. All right, I think I should take the escalator back down again.